Good morning, everyone. Thank you all for joining us. Apologies for the not so favorable weather, but it is Missouri, so we're running with it. Um, we're going to get started this morning with uh, from talking from Michael Masick, director of the St. Louis Zoo. All right, well, good morning, everybody, and welcome. Uh, thank you for joining us on this very special day. The Emerson Zoo Line Railroad is celebrating its 60th year this year, and we know that holds a lot of memories for a lot of our zoo guests. Over the last 60 years, more than 41 million guests have ridden the train. To accommodate larger numbers of guests, the zoo has added locomotives and coaches throughout the years. I think we have six now. Um, today we are adding a new train to the fleet, an electric train. This electric train brings a positive long-term environmental impact to the zoo with fewer gas emissions and fewer non-renewable resources. As these trains begin to age, the balance of our trains, we will replace all of the locomotives through this greener approach. Uh, the zoo names each of its trains after an important St. Louis uh, person figure in history, including Lewis and Clark, uh, Pierre Laclede, and Charlatan Tandy. The name of this train is an important one. It is the first train named after a woman. And in a moment, uh, Cassandra Brown Ray, the zoo's first female chief financial officer, will actually now reveal the name of the train. Cassandra. One more. So our electric train is named after Mary Meacham, an abolitionist in St. Louis who was instrumental in educating black people and played a critical role in the Underground Railroad. Last month was Black History Month, and this month being Women's History Month, we couldn't think of a more fitting time to share the name of our newest train. Here to tell us more about Mary Meacham and her impact on educating black people and helping guide slaves to their freedom is Angela De Silva. Angela is a retired university professor, cultural preservationist, author, and historical performance interpreter with an emphasis on slavery. For the past 30 years, she had led, has led black history tours in St. Louis and has been a part of the Mary Meacham celebration for over 21 years. Please welcome Angela De Silva. John and Mary Meacham were a black couple that left their imprint on and around St. Louis, both together and separately. Mary Meacham was freeborn in Kentucky and is listed as a washerwoman in the census. Her husband was the esteemed John Barry Meacham. He was born in Virginia and was a skilled cooper who had a barrel factory on the levee. He created the first black church west of the Mississippi. John Barry Meacham historically is remembered for his efforts to educate blacks and mulattoes here when it was against the law. His congregation had both enslaved and free people, and whenever he heard that a member or a member's family were to be sold, he, with the aid of other anti-slavery citizens, would purchase that person, and they would work off their purchase price in his factory. In the basement of the church, they would learn how to read and write. When their debt was paid, he would legally free them at the courthouse. Then, armed with their freedom papers, he would use the Underground Railroad to make sure they got to freedom. In 1854, while delivering a sermon on a Sunday morning, he died. Mary, not having the benefits of her husband's resources, continued their freedom work. On May the 21st, 1855, she had arranged for abolitionists to come from Alton to ferry a group of slaves across the river to Venice, Illinois, with the ultimate destination being Canada. We don't know how many people she helped free. We only know about this escape because it was partially successful. And the runaway enslaved were owned by prominent St. Louisans, including the Henry Shaw. This was dangerous work, 
and the federal law was clear what the circumstances would be, what consequences would be for those aiding and abetting fugitives, not to mention Missouri's own draconian property protection laws. Though freeborn as she was, she faced being placed into slavery, the very thing she abhorred if she was caught. That night, she had arranged for nine slaves to meet at the Bissell Ferry Landing there between Grand and Adelaide. Within, with the issuance of the Emancipation Proclamation, black men could join the Union Army, and there were thousands of men, both free and runaway enslaved, that rushed to St. Louis's Benton Barracks to sign up. But the Commandant knew these men could never attain rank without being able to read and write. He sent for Mary Meacham and asked for her to rally other prominent black women who could come and teach these men. People of color could not ride the omnibus which ran down Grand Avenue past Bitten Barracks, so with the Army's help, she sued the city of St. Louis and won the right of these women to ride it on Saturdays. She was instrumental in helping the newly freed gain knowledge to navigate life as freedmen through her church and civic organizations. She was generous and empathetic toward those whose condition she did not share. She died in 1869, never having any children of her own, but left a legacy and imprint on the concept of slavery. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Angela. Um, what an incredible, rich history, and how lucky we are to have um, Angela tell and speak to her legacy here today. And you know, really throughout St. Louis. So thank you, Angela, for that incredible insight on the life of Mary Meacham and the risk she, take, she took rather to uh, free those from slavery. Um, we're honored to carry on her legacy here um, in the form of the Mary Meacham train at the zoo. So now um, I invite all of our guests here uh, to board the Mary Meacham electric train for its inaugural uh, ride. Our train engineers today are Rebecca DeGrief and our train conductor is Ralph Jackson, so all aboard. Yeah.